Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's Golden Wind Geek Out. I'm your host, Danny. Got my cohort, Ryan, with me. Hello. And I just want to know, what the hell did we do this week to earn such an amazing Friday? I have no goddamn idea. <laughs> it's like, JoJo Friday's always a blessing. It's also the day that Smash comes out. Doubly blessing. And, and for the majority of people, today is also payday. Yes, yeah, so triple blessing. Joker from Persona 5 gets announced minutes before midnight release. That's like a quadruple blessing. And then this fucking episode. It's like, what the hell did we do that today ended up being amazing? I don't even know. All I know is that my my stomach still hurts from laughing so goddamn hard at what the hell was going on throughout this entire freaking episode. Yes. Alrighty, so um, first and foremost, no Narancha backstory this week. You know, we had thought that we were getting it because that's when it shows up in the manga, but it looks like, you know, we didn't even get through the entire fight. So we're, we're thinking maybe next week is when we're getting Narancha's backstory. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, but, um, yeah, but, no, kind of for good reason. <laughs> but, um, we will get there, we'll get there relatively soon. Um, first things first, I know I noticed this, um, what you call it. So, towards the beginning of the episode, you know, we do see a very, like, quick scene, like, what, like a two-minute scene of everybody back at the hideout, like, where they're hiding out, and... You know, they're starting to worry about where Narancha is. You know, they're, you know, it's like, you know, like, Miss is going, you know, I gotta feed the pistols. Trish is going, where's my French mineral water, boys? You know, uh, Dornell's wondering where Narancha is. Fugo is freaking out. You know, he's like, I told you guys we shouldn't have sent him. The only, you know, this was the bad idea. And Abakio's saying, you know, dude, calm down. And, you know, even Fugo's like, no, I'm not dropping this. And it's like, you know, so you can definitely, so it's like, I actually thought that was a really cool addition, because, again, in the manga, that's never really addressed. It's like, once the fight begins, you're pretty much with Narancha from beginning to end. And it's like, it does kind of beg that question, you know, yeah, if they, if you send somebody out to go gather supplies, and that person gets involved in a fight, naturally they're going to take up a lot more time. It's like, um, did these guys, like, just, like, not worry about where this kid was? <laughs> You know, but, uh, nope, not in the anime. They're actually, like, wondering. I mean, they still do, they still don't, they're still not doing, like, you know, okay, let's go send somebody out to go get them or anything. You know, no, they're still staying behind because they got to guard Trish. But at least they addressed that question. Yeah, really. And then, um, yeah, pretty much, like, after that scene, again... A lot of this is pretty much beat for beat for what happened in the manga. So, now let's actually talk about the amazing shit. Yeah, yeah. The, honestly, I think it's safe to say this is probably, like, the biggest um, se biggest uh, uh, helping of new content we've ever gotten on this anime adaptation. And that being, like, the, ba like the uh, I guess, backstory, if you want to call it, of La Squadra. Well, well, they ex they talk, talk about expanding on it. Because, I mean, it's like, again, a lot of the new content that we've been getting up until now was maybe, like, what, maybe, like, a minute most or something, you know, just, like, interspliced here and there. I think with the exception of, like, the first episode, like, the first, like, five minutes was all new content before we got into, like, manga properly. But after that, whatever new content we had, there were, like, little tiny scenes or whatever. Meanwhile, man, I gotta, I gotta actually go back and count just how much time was spent on fleshing out La Squadra's backstory. Because, my God, I mean, it took, I want to say it took up close to half of the episode. At least that's what it felt like. Uh, yeah, yeah, that that's, that sounds about right. It's like, yeah, I feel like at least a third of the episode consisted of this expansion of La Squadra. Yeah, so it's like, you know, I'll go back, I'll, you know, I'll clock it, and then I'll add it, you know, right here. You know, this is how long it took to tell La Squadra's backstory. So, um, couple of things. First things first, um, we're not keeping La Squadra a secret.
secret anymore. Because in the manga, the way they handled the backstory was, um, they, they kept everybody else in shadow, with the exception of Sorbet, Gelato, and, of course, Formaggio. But every other member kept in shadow, no distinct features or anything. So, you know, in the manga, that was to help keep the mystery. So when we got to the next fight was when we were actually seeing each of these members of La Squadra for the first time. Yeah, yeah, they're just saying, yeah, fuck that, we're not doing that this time, you know, we're not gonna try and flesh out the backstory of these guys and try and keep them in shadow the whole time. Yeah, that ain't gonna fly. So, pretty much, we've seen who everybody is, we've got a good idea as to what they sound like, so we got their voice actors, you know, it'll probably take like a week before we get confirmation as to who, who voices who. <laughs> As far as voice performances go, like, you know, like, who would you say out of La Squadra, who would you say is your favorite? As far as just, oh, just like, your favorite voice. Well, oh, man. You know, it's really hard for, I mean, it's really hard for me to say. And it's, like, not so much because, like, we do really, I mean, we got, like, some samples of the of these various voices from La Squadra. It, it wasn't anything too much, but it wasn't just because of that. It's because of how, well, I don't want to jump ahead too far, but let's just say a bunch of shit that happened during this expansion of the Squadra had me, like, laughing or getting stoked so goddamn hard that I couldn't, that I couldn't even listen closely to how, how each character sounded. Yeah, that, that is true. I mean, I mean, all I know is, is like, oh, God, what was it? What was that? Oh, God. What was that one character? from uh on the during the train fight not the guy not the not the bald guy with the green hair but the other guy uh prosciutto yeah i think i remember i think his one that stood out to me the most i'm like i'm already liking what direction he's taking with his voice yeah same yeah same here i definitely like i like prosciutto's performance i like gacho's performance too like he really does sound like he's getting his like neurotic side down yeah, it, wait, 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 which, which, uh, which uh, villain was that again? Uh, that was the, um, the white, uh, white album. The guy with the, uh, blue hair and the red glasses. Oh, okay, yeah, that was, a, you know what, that's the next person I was gonna bring up. That was the, uh, another voice that, even though I was, like, freaking out and shit, you know, that, that was the second voice that got my attention. I also, I'm also really liking the voice performance on that guy as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I'd have to say, like, probably, uh, like, and I know it's probably not fair to make the judgment just because, um, you know, some characters only got a couple of lines, whereas, like, others got a lot of dialogue. Like, Prosciutto got a lot of dialogue. But, like, Malone got maybe, like, two lines. So it's like, I admit, it's probably not fair to, you know, to fully judge. But at least, but, you know, we're talking first impressions here. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, it's like, I'd have to say, you know, I think, yeah, for me, I'd say Prosciutto and Gacho stood out. Everybody else sounds fine, but those two were definitely the standouts for this. Yeah, yeah, they were the standouts, but it's, but it's like, I would have to listen in on, like, their voices again, like, in between, like, while, while we're not recording and such, just so that I could get a much better idea on what the other characters sound like and what we can expect when it comes to more voice performances from those characters in the future. Because because it's like yeah they're not the ones that stood out. That has to say that you know I was I wasn't you know completely unaware of what they sounded like. You know you know what I mean. That that kind that kind of sounded a little bit jumbled there. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, and then it's like you know meanwhile like we're all you know we also got like a little bit of a glimpse as to who these characters are. So, I mean, that's where it's like, you know, again, like, Gacho, for example. Gacho is so fucking neurotic. That's like, when he was first introduced in the manga, he had, like, this whole little dialogue to himself where he's thinking of, like, you know, okay, so we Italians, we call the city Venezia. But everywhere else in the world, 
They call our city Venice. What is, what the fuck is up with that? And he's like, he has this whole dialogue and he's like, you know, throwing a temper tantrum over such a minute little detail. He's like, you know, yeah, where he's like, you know, everybody calls Paris by its by the same name, but no, not Ven- but not Venezia. No, that one gets a different name by the rest of the world. That's not fucking fair. So it's like <laughs> that's got you in a fucking nutshell. And yeah, really. I think suffice it to say, the anime definitely showed off the neurotic side. You know, we do see the relationship between Prosciutto and Pesci. Like we do see that Pesci is like the weaker willed one. Like, they were say- he was saying how, like, you know, yeah, they're at a restaurant, he's drinking milk, and Prosciutto's like, oh, dude, grow the fuck up. <laughs> he's like, you know, he's like, you're an assassin. What are you doing drinking baby milk? <laughs> you know, so it's like, it's like, yeah, <laughs> again, that's Prosciutto and Pesci. Pesci is, you know, yeah, I mean, like, Prosciutto even calls him, like, what is it, like a mamone or something, which is basically like mama's boy. In Italian, like even call yeah, you know, he calls him that. So we saw, you know, we see that we see Eluso being a cocky little shit. Malone, we're not there yet. We have a ways to go. <laughs> All yeah. I'm going to say though, Malone is a fucking trigger warning. <laughs> but we will cross that bridge when we get there. If you're talking about what I think you're talking about, then I'll, okay, I'll uh, take it baby for face. It. Oh no! Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, oh let, no, 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 yeah, no, we're, no, we're, no, 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 no! We're we're not there yet. We will cross that bridge. When we get there. Mm, okay. Okay, and then um, oh god, who's left? Um, yeah, then you got uh, Risotto Nero, who's you know, of course, the leader, who's Mister Super Serious. Again, yeah. not too much to really. Yeah. Again, not too much to really talk about him though. And then, as far as uh, sorbet and gelato go, I know in the manga, you know they did mention in the manga that you know these two were so close, and like you know, if I recall correctly, the dialogue was like explicitly saying you know the people, the you know these two were so close that people often wondered were they a couple. So the manga kind of kept it up in the air, whereas like you know. Okay, maybe they are, maybe they're not. Like, there there was no direct, you know, confirmation. I mean, it's like, yeah, we see them, like, you know, hanging all over each other. But it's like, dude, we see the boys hanging all over each other all throughout this part. That doesn't make any of them fucking gay. But the anime is saying, yeah, no. The, they are a couple. Eluso pretty much confirmed it. Like, you know, Prosciutto's asking, like, where are they? And Eluso's like, and eh, they're probably getting it on. <laughs> So it's like, okay, yeah. we have confirmation. Sorbet and Gelato, they are indeed a couple. So no questions asked, people. Yes. So, and then, like, yeah, pretty much from here on out, like, you know, we got that, we got, uh, you know, bleh. God, I can't even talk today. There's just, there's just so much to talk about. <laughs> So much has happened on just one single fucking day. I know, that's where it's like, you know... We, can, we can't process it all. I'm still trying to process it all. Well, let alone, like, um... So, what they did, like, before we even got into, like, you know, the part of the backstory where the manga actually kicks in, you know, we see that, I guess they were... I guess they were doing a hit. You know, they're going after some guy. I don't know what the hell this guy was doing or whatever. It didn't even look like, you know, he was doing anything bad or whatever. But, you know, hey, somebody put a pit, put a hit out on this guy, so they got a job to do. And it's like, oh, my God, man. What the fuck? That's like, why are we allowed to see this? <laughs> that's like a, that's like a, yeah, yeah, Ryan, do you want to explain what the hell happened? Like, what the hell Formaggio did? Well, okay. So, uh... Before we even got to the proper introduction of La Squadra, we see Formaggio just walking past this lovely couple. You know, they're just having an idle chit-chat, having a glass of wine. And lo and behold, uh, Formaggio was carrying just a little car. And by little car, I'm not talking about a hot wheel. Of course, with his stand, tiny feet. Oh, little feet, yeah. But... <laughs> yeah, little feet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. Um... <laughs> But it's like, he had this just shrunken down car, and he sl- he, he slipped the car in the gentleman's wine. 
So he was basically giving a, what was it, a roofie? He, 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 he freaking gave a roofie with a car and a goddamn glass of wine, and the gentleman drank the wine. So what does that entail? Well, after the couple left the restaurant, just out of the blue, then this guy, like, holds his stomach, and he's in pain. In so much goddamn pain. And then we see it happen. The car is regaining size. It's getting bigger. His body keeps getting bloated. And as you know, his body freaking explodes. And the, and the, it, the actual size car is still intact, but it's like his body explodes. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. No. no. Don't do oh no. Oh my god. Oh no, no. It's happening. He's. Oh my god. Oh. oh my god. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh. What the fuck? Oh shit! Why are we allowed to see this? <laughs> How is this not fully censored? Not only that, yeah, not only did you see Formaggio just completely blow this guy apart by, you know, bringing his car back to its original size, you know, the guy's like, wife or whatever, she ends up getting crushed by the car when he returns to yeah, size! That was a that was the next scene. That was the other thing that, that I wasn't even expecting. I thought it was like, I thought it was one of those tropes where it's like, oh no, something bad happened to like the husband or something. And she just stands there horrified at the event and she's going to be screaming her lungs out, you know, just from seeing this horrifying event. But no, the moment this happened, yeah, the car just ironically just splatters the woman. It's like, what the fuck? I know, I was like, what the hell? That's like, they even like pointed this out, like they go back to the headquarters and you know, and, yeah, they're saying, you know, okay, is the job done? You know, Fumajo's like, yep, the job is done. And even Prosciutto's like, yeah, but you killed the woman that was with him. So it's, it's like, you know, it's, clearly they did, you know, it's like, okay, so I mean, I guess that shows like, again, it's like, you know, again, this is more so Prosciutto, because it's like, because really it's like, out of like all of La Squadra and everything, that's like, I remember, I think it's uh, Medi, not the bad guy. He did, like, a whole video on Prosciutto, you know, and he brought up this really good point where it's, like, out of all the members of La Squadra, like, you know, of course you got Risotto Nero as the, uh, as the leader, but if there was anyone that looks like they could be, like, the second in command or, like, you know, capo level, basically, like, where, like, Bruno is, it would be Prosciutto. And it's, like, you know... Yeah, again, we kind of see that here, because it's like, you know, yeah, Fomaggio's like, yeah, I killed the guy, and he didn't give a shit if he killed the woman or not, but Prosciutto's like, well, yeah, but you killed the woman, too. Clearly, they had nothing on the woman, but Fomaggio's like, I don't give a shit. It's like collateral damage. I don't care. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's like, I mean, she was, I mean, hey, she was in the way. If she would have stayed out of the way, then maybe that wouldn't have happened. Or, 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 or something like that. That's probably what Formaggio was thinking. But even then, it's like, Jesus Christ. It's like, okay, I know I know for a fact we're going to deal with even more gruesome shit like later during this part. But holy crap, this is the goriest free parking I have ever seen. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, easily, literally. Yeah this, is, yeah, this is hands down the goriest episode we have had so far. I mean, hands down. And it's like, Ugh. now mind you guys... That's all new content. Pretty much now from here we move on into where the manga picks up. Oh Jesus Christ. What the hell? Look at all that blood. But punishment. Oh god, the package <gasps> oh, oh no. no. Oh god, here it goes. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> gotta be like Crazy? Well, well this is probably gonna be like because remember this is where you see like you know the insides of bodies and shit like usually this gets yeah. censored so this is probably just gonna be like weird huge black blurs wait that doesn't look censored those are clearly fingers Okay, so it was Pesci that actually pick, picked up that, you know, wait a minute, something's wrong here. 
その美術品の数は36にもなったおいおいおいマジかよこいつは<laughs> Wow, this isn't censored、no, What is no, this? Are we this is actually getting、censored. that sense of Jojo now? In broadcast? <laughs> What the oh god, I even saw the bone in one of the little pieces! Oh my god! What the、oh. fuck? What is happening? <laughs> <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> oh! Look, look at that! Look at, look at this! <laughs> so, wait, let me, so let me get this straight. So, we're allowed to see this, but we can't see Jotaro smoking a cigarette in part three. What the hell, Japan? <laughs> What the fuck? Like, Japan, we need to have a talk. Seriously. <laughs> oh. So, back in episode one, Lee Guy Luca's fingers got censored, but now we're allowed to see this? Oh man. Wait a minute. I guess a lot I guess a lot could happen in four years. Wait, hang on. Oh my god, that hair Oh my god, that's Chocolata! What is it? Yes! Yeah, if you remember Chocolata had the, the weird like sticking up dreads? And remember he was a former doctor. He knows how to cut up a body. Oh shit, that's oh right! God! We actually have Oh my god, my mind! <laughs> oh, oh my god! What did this we do、awesome. this week to deserve this goodness? I don't know why now, all of a sudden, they're allowed to show this uncensored! I thought for a fact this part at least would be censored. Because, I mean, hell, back in episode one, if you remember, When Jorno threw up l e a k y e y e Lucas' fingers, they censored the ends of Lucas' fingers because they were going to be showing muscles and bone and shit. You know, that's where it's like, you know, they, they pretty much did it exactly like what they did in part four with Kira's hand victims. So I thought for sure this part would be censored. Nope! No censors in this episode! So it's like, what the hell is going on that, like, you know, Yeah, like this is this is where I was like worried. Like, you know, back when this thing got announced, like, yeah, moments like these that are gonna have such a gut punch emotional impact, you're not gonna have that same impact because it's no doubt gonna be censored. But clearly, that didn't happen this time. So it's like, I just wanna know what in the hell is going on in Japan right now that now they're getting lax on the censorships in JoJo when they've been so fucking strict in the past. To the point, like, they won't even show Jotaro smoking a cigarette. But they'll gladly show a guy, his corpse, being, like, cut up and encased in 36 pieces of artwork. Uh, yeah, it's like, oh, like, I, I, don't, I don't even know at this point. It's like, I mean, I, I guess when you really get down to it, when we got, like, a really close up shot of, like, say, of the victim's face, you know, as we're looking to, like, the frames or whatever, it's like, yeah, it was clearly obvious. That,、um, you know, it, this, is, this, is, this is like pieces of a guy's, like, like, his entire head just sliced up into like three separate parts or whatever. But then it's like, if you look underneath the, the body parts or whatever, it's like there, there, was, there was nothing but black under him. So, so I guess one could argue that there was some form of censorship, you know, to block out the really muscly and gory parts, you know, on, when we got like,、uh, when you look under, when you get the, when you get the shot of the body parts and we see like, um, Beneath, like the slices of like um corpse parts or whatever, but but even but even if there was even if that was like some form of censorship, it, it was not okay, it was not like nearly as obvious enough. It was clearly shown as like, oh shit, these are slices of a freaking corpse, yeah. I mean, it's like you know, because yeah, I mean, they showed the pieces of artwork with like you know his body in them. And there was no censors. You were seeing the bone, the muscle, the organs being preserved in this stuff. So, I mean, it's like they showed it all. So, that's where it's just like, God damn it, man. I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong, guys. I'm glad that it's uncensored because it's like I said, that I think, you know, it, if it was censored, while it, made, while it would definitely make sense. At the same time, it does kind of ruin the gut punch. 
you know, because that was like the whole thing, like even in the manga, like, I mean, Ryan, when you first, when I first showed you this in the manga, the fact that the manga, of course, is not going to be censored, you know, because of how gory that part was, even you were like freaking out when you first saw that. You were like, oh my God, like what the fuck and everything. Yeah, really? Yeah. And it's like, I was like, you know, you got that gut punch reaction to it and everything. So that's where I was like, I'm so glad that we're not getting it censored, that it's not being censored so we can still get those gut punch reactions. And it does now leave me a lot more hope now for when we do get up to seeing uh, Risotto Nero's fight. Because that's the fight that I, I, th I keep telling myself, that's going to be the fight that, you know, we're not going to be able to, like, enjoy this thing because it's going to get censored so badly because it is, like, the most gory fight out of the entire part. But if they're getting away with showing off, you know, this freaking corpse... Risotto Nero's fight should be simple. Yeah, yeah, That for that, I am completely uncertain of, unfortunately. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's, okay. Let's just go on ahead and just move on, you know, because it's like, we can, like, be pondering about this shit all day, but, um. Oh, uh, oh, uh, yeah, but, I mean, it's, I mean, it's like, even with that, it's like, with all these considered, like, even at, like, even after, like, the whole, uh, expansion and backstory with La Squadra, Everything else, like we 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 instantly pick back up where we left off during the Narancia fight or whatever, and yeah, at, at that point, that's when everything was like back to how it was in the manga. Like everything was like beat for beat. Yes, but here's but there is one. There's actually one last. There's actually one last bit from that flashback, and I I know I was freaking the fuck out when I saw this. So um, spoiler tag here. So. When we were seeing the flashback of, like, you know, yeah, when, uh, yeah, with Sorbet and Gelato getting, uh, yeah, getting killed and everything, and you're seeing, like, you know, you see the shadow of um, where Sorbet was actually getting cut. Now, in the manga, of course, you don't see that. So it just led to the impression that, you know, okay, this was the boss's doing. You know, they were looking into the boss's identity, he caught wind of it, and he decided to take them out directly. So the anime, they're saying, yeah, no. You know, basically, you know, the boss caught on that they were looking for him, but rather than taking on, you know, rather than trying to take them out himself, he said decided to send a member of his personal squad to go after them. And... Oh my god, I was so, I was freaking the fuck out when I saw this. Because now this guy you only saw in Shadow, but read the manga. You don't forget this motherfucker's hairstyle. You just fucking don't. So <laughs> as soon as you see the weird little dreadlocks like sticking up in the air and he's got a bloody knife and knowing the fact that this guy gets chopped up, I was like, oh my god. We're episode 10, and we actually have Chocolata showing up! Uh... <laughs> I was like, oh my god, that actually makes perfect sense. It, it, re it really does, actually. <laughs> I mean, yeah, the boss, the, the, the whole thing with the boss is that he is trying so hard to keep his identity a secret. He does not want anyone to find out who he is, what's his stand ability, so that way no one can try and stop him. So it's like, okay, you got two schmucks that are now looking for your identity. So it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, they need to go. But it makes so much more sense that considering how secretive this guy is, that he would send somebody to take him out in his place. And of course you send the crazy ass motherfucker doctor that actually knows how to cut up a body. Yeah, really. This just makes fucking perfect sense. I was like, like considering ugh. the considering how batshit insane Chocolata is, like, of course, Chocolata would come up with this idea. I'm gonna chop up this guy and I'm gonna put him in 36 pieces of artwork. That yeah, you know, thinking about it, that definitely that screams Chocolata so much more than it screams the boss. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, really. Oh. I was like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong, guys. It's like, trust me, if you have not read the manga and you're only watching the anime, 
we're not gonna get to joke a lot for a long time. But yeah, we're, yeah, we're we're, ta- we're not gonna get to this guy for a very long time. But yeah, yeah, close to the end of the part, actually. Yeah, really. So I mean, it's like we got a long ways to go before we see him again. But that's yeah. where I'm just like, oh my god, they actually showed him off. Granted, it's in shadow, so it's like, okay, he's not getting the La Squadra treatment. But still, it's like, like I said, you don't forget that hair. You don't forget <laughs> that fucking hair. So, I, yeah, I think suffice it to say, um, La Squadra, oh my god. I, I already loved you guys in the manga. I still say that La Squadra is hands down like these are the best minor villains in all of jojo i didn't think it was possible to love them anymore but i'm and sure enough (laughs) (laughs) and sure enough boy am i fucking wrong and boy am i glad to be wrong it's like oh my (laughs) god yeah once again thank you david productions i mean holy shit I think it, I think suffice it to say, La Squadra kind of stole the episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because it's like you said. Pretty much after this, we continue on with the fight, and the fight it's pretty much just beat for beat for the manga. So there's nothing really new that they're adding to the fight itself. Now, where the fight ended, you know, that's where it's like, okay, Formaggio has figured out how Aerosmith works. So, we got the whole radar thing going on. We got to see Aerosmith in action. So, it's like, that's all cool. But it's still not the whole fight. So, next week, we'll be seeing the rest of the fight for sure. Now, I don't know whether to take this as, okay, it's going to take up the entire episode or only half. Because there's still a big portion of this fight that we haven't seen. That's like, you know, last week I called it Attack on Titan with Spiders. We didn't get that this week. So we'll be getting Attack on Titan with Spiders next week. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. It's like... Mm. Honest, honestly, yeah, honestly, I'm thinking at the very least, like, the remainder of the Durantia fight will take up... No. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Well, okay, they, ha- okay, they have to fit in Durantia's backstory at one point or another. So... I don't know. It's like, I'm thinking like one quarter of the episode will be Naranja's backstory. And then I think like another like third of the episode will be the rest of the Naranja fight. And then they'll end it off with some other rent. And then they'll end it off with like a different cliffhanger or something. Okay. Because cause I do not remember exactly what happens after the Naranja fight. But I'm going to assume like if that, if this, if this were the case... They're gonna move on with the plot or whatever, but then come, but then find a way to pull off another cliffhanger, like when we're when we're getting into some more really good shit. Yeah, like we're get, yeah setting up setting up for the next fight. Yeah, or or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like again, it's so hard to really gauge just because with how much time was dedicated to La Squadra in this episode and. Assuming that we get Naranja's backstory in the next episode, I don't see why we wouldn't. I mean, it's like, it makes sense. Why not, sh- why, you know, if you're going to shove both backstories in one episode, that would feel really disjointed. So it's yeah. like, it makes sense. Okay, La Squadra, give them their backstory one episode. Naranja's backstory comes in another episode. So I don't see it, why it can't, like, you know, yeah, like next week, like, you know, what they like what they did with Abakio and Mista, where it's like, the episode begins with Naranja's backstory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just like what you said, Danny. It's like... Yeah, even though, yeah, even though this episode, like, consisted of, like, another, like, massive, like, chunk of the Narancha fight or whatever, it's like, no, you're absolutely right. It's like, La Squadra literally stole the spotlight for this episode. So, yeah, I I agree. It only makes sense for the next episode where it's like, okay, all right, all right, La Squadra, you had your, you had your fun under the spotlight. Okay, let's move it over to Narancha. Let, let, let him, let's let him have the stage again. Yeah, so that's where it's like, you know, it's so hard to gauge, like, just how, I mean, we will be getting the rest of the fight next week, for certain. 
it's just it's really hard to tell whether it's going to take up the entire episode or yeah it, or like what you said Ryan it'll take up maybe two thirds of the episode and we'll probably be ending on like the cliffhanger you know setting up for the next episode so I mean it's like it, it's really hard to gauge just because of how much time was solely dedicated to La Squadra and we haven't even gotten Narancha's backstory yet and Narancha had a as far as manga pages go, Naracha had a pretty lengthy one. Uh, yeah, 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 he, he really did. So that's where it's just like, I don't know, man. But, oh my god, like, suffice it to say, like, I think just from when we were watching these episodes, like, as far as reactions go, that's like, oh my god, this episode... This right now, I think this might have ended up being like my favorite episode so far, and it's solely because of La Squadra. Yeah, really. I mean, it's like based on our reactions that we had when we, when we initially watched the episode, it's like if this is seriously like the kind of how we're how we're gonna be, you know, when we see shit like this, it's like, oh man, Lord knows how we're gonna feel like later during this part with all the other insane and more bizarre shit we're gonna see it's like oh man i think this may be the end for me i think i think at one point or another I i'm just gonna flat out die yeah because i mean like i don't know about you ryan but it's like you know i mean when i go back usually i'll re-watch episodes multiple times like even after we've done the recording and you know because you know sometimes maybe i catch shit or you know i just watch episodes for fun and admittedly, there are some episodes that I've watched multiple times, like, more than others. I think, like, up until this point, probably the episode that I personally have watched the most, honestly, I think was the episode where it was Bruno and Abacchio on the boat, and they're trying to track down Soft Machine. Like, you know, so you got, that's where you got Abacchio's backstory, and that's where Moody Blues really shines. Like, I think that's the episode I've watched the most. Because I just really loved how that episode was handled. But just from gauging what happened today, I think, I think that might have competition now. Yeah, really. Yeah, oh my god. So it's like, oh man. It's like, Dave Production, you have been doing wonders so far. But holy shit, man. You have definitely been giving La Squadra their proper justice. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself. So it's like, oh god, I can't. Now it's like I can't wait to see the rest of these characters in action. Now, so it's like, oh my god, I don't want this to end. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I'm gonna need to take a while to simmer down after all of this shit. Well, like, really. Yeah, fortunately, I know the perfect way to do that. So. Uh, so guys, hope you all enjoyed this episode as much as we did. So we will see you all next week for episode 11. Okay, we, we got to calm down now. Let's go back to Smash. <laughs>